Hi there. Today we're going to look into how to create custom buttons that can adapt to different states. For example, here we have a custom button style for the state where it's not selected. When it's selected, the background color will change, but also the font color. And it also has a custom style for the case that the button is disabled. Similarly, when we switch to the dark mode, we will also be able to customize the background and the label color for all the previously mentioned states. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, open up Xcode and create a new project. Make sure you select app. Press next. Choose a name. I will name this one Buttons Playground. Also make sure that you select the interface to be served UI, a language to swap. Press next and save it somewhere you like. Once you're in Xcode, make sure you select the simulator to be the iPhone 11. Try to get the automatic preview. Also let's zoom out a bit. And let's also replace the body with a Wii stick. And we will create two buttons in here. And the first one I will simply call enabled and it won't have an action for now. And we will just copy this one down here as well. And this time call this one disabled. Now to disable the button, we have to also call the modifier disabled and we set it to true here. Now you could go ahead and just style the button right here by simply um, setting the background color and the foreground color as a modifier. But the problem here is when you style these, you do not really have a hold of the um, on-pressed state. And most of the times you want your buttons to adapt to different states, such as for example, when it's pressed, you want to change the background color and maybe also the label color. However, this is not possible by just using modifier on the buttons. However, there's a much better way to do this. What we can do is we can create our own button style and then pass it in here and the button style itself will have access to the state of the button. So before we add this modifier, let's make sure that we create this button style. So let's create a new Swift file. And I will simply name this one rounded button style. And I will replace the import foundation with import Swift UI, like so. And in here, I will create a struct called rounded button style, and it's going to be of type button style. Now, Xcode will complain because we do not conform to the button style protocol yet. And to conform to it, we have to implement a function that is called make body. Now this make body will give us this configuration, which basically allows us to also read off the state of the button. So if you have a look here, you will be able to check if the button was pressed, but you will also be able to check the label of the button. However, you are not able to read off whether the dark mode is enabled or whether the button itself is enabled. To read these off, you have to read it off from the environment, but unfortunately you can't just um, read it from the environment when you are inside of the button style. However, there's a workaround for this. And the way you do that is um, you create a new struct in here and you will simply call this one rounded button, for example, which is going to be of type wheel. And in here you can read off the um, environment. So you type environment and you want to read off whether the button is enabled. So you type enabled and you store it into a private variable. And similarly, you also want to read off the color scheme, which will tell us whether we are in dark mode or not. Now to make this conform to the view, we have to also implement the body. Now in here, I will just simply create a text for now. And I have to initialize the rounded button with the configuration so that I can also read off whether it is pressed or not pressed, but also the label of the button. So to do that, I will create a property called configuration. And the configuration is going to be of button style dot configuration. And inside of the make body method, we are simply going to call a rounded button with the configuration like so. Now let's go back to our content view. And in here, we are going to simply say button style. 
and we will pass our rounded button style in here. And similarly, we will also do it for the other button right here. Now let's see how this looks. If we press resume, you will see that although the button has the label enabled and disabled, you do not really see it in here. And that is because the rounded button style decided to not provide a text in here. So we could also simply replace this with configuration.label. In fact, uh, then you do not even have to pass it into a text. You can just simply pass it in like this. And then if you go back to your content view and resume, you should be able to see enabled and disabled. All right, now all we have to do now is to style our buttons based on whether it's enabled, whether it's on dark mode, but also whether it is pressed or not. Now to keep track of the different states, I'm going to create multiple um, computer properties. So I will first start by keeping track of all the background colors for the different states. So let's simply create this variable background color. And it's going to be of type color. And in here we want to check if the button is enabled. So if the button is not enabled, we are simply going to return the color gray for the background color. And if the color scheme is set to dark mode. Now, if the color scheme is in dark mode, we have to still distinguish between the pressed and not pressed state. So we will say return configuration is pressed. So if it is pressed, we will return the color white. Otherwise, we will return the color blue. Now, if the color scheme is white, we do not return here, we continue here. So I will simply say, if configuration is pressed, return color blue. Otherwise, return the color white. Now make sure you uh, add the return key here, like so. Now we have to do the similar thing for the border color. So we we'll simply just copy this and call this one border color. And if it is not enabled, we will also return gray. Now if it's in dark mode, we actually want to have the same color as the background color. So instead of returning this, I will simply return the background color and move this all to one line like so. And lastly, when the button is pressed and we are not in the dark mode, so in the light mode, I want to return the color white. Now for the other case where it's not pressed, I will simply have the blue color. And lastly, we have to do the same thing for the label color. So I will copy this one. Rename this to a label color. If it's not enabled, we return gray. If, the, if it's in the dark mode, we have to distinguish again between the pressed and not pressed state. So let me just copy this line from the background. Paste it in here. And if it is pressed, we want to have it to be blue and otherwise we want it to be white but otherwise it is very similar to the background. All right, now we are ready to style the button. So let's go into the body and simply start by creating a rounded rectangle. Now we'll give it a corner radius of five. Now we can't just give this rounded rectangle a fill color and a border at the same time. So we can't fill and stroke it at the same time. So the way you actually do it is a bit different. So in here, what we actually have are two rounded rectangles. So the background rounded rectangle is blue and the rectangle on top of that is the uh, white rectangle, but it has a slight padding. That's why you see the uh, blue outline here. So the way you do that is you simply create an overlay. And inside of this overlay, you will um, pass in a rounded rectangle. with a slightly smaller corner radius. So let's say we give it a corner radius of five and this one a corner radius of six. And then I will um, 
fill it with the background color that we just determined based on the state up here. And then um, we also want to add the padding so you can see the slight stroke. Now the foreground color of the rounded rectangle that is not part of the overlay um, will decide how the border looks. So what we have to do is say foreground color is going to be the border color and that way it will look like we have a border that has this um, border color. Now on top of that overlay we are going to have another overlay with our label. So let's create an overlay here and here we will simply call the config configuration label and we will style it with the foreground color which is going to be our label color that we determined and we will also give it a font of body. Now let's save this and uh, go back to our content view. Um, let's get our canvas back and resume. Now here we can already see the buttons, but it seems like for the um, disabled state, we didn't set the right background because what we actually expected was something that looks more like this. So let's try to figure out what we did wrong. Now here you can see that if it is disabled, we're setting the background color to gray. But what we actually want is to set the background color to white. Now let's go back to the content view and see if that fixes it already. Yep, that looks much better. Now the only thing we need to fix is um, we have to give it some uh, height and width, also some uh, padding. Now there are many ways to do this. You could simply do it in here and uh, set the frame height. But um, I think it's much nicer if the button style can do that for us. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to introduce some properties to the uh, rounded button style. So we will have a private width of type CG float that's going to be optional. And similarly, we will have a private height of type CG float, which is going to be optional as well. And we will have an initializer that will initialize these for us. And we want the width to be nil. So if the user does not set it, we will just use the space that is available to us. And we are going to set the height similarly, but um, instead of setting it per default to nil, we will set it to 60 like so. And inside of the initializer, we are simply going to set them to what we get past like so. Now inside of the body, we have to use the width and height. And the way we do that is um, after this rounded button, going to say frame with an width and height and here we pass our width and height and we do not need an alignment so let's see how this looks all right that looks much better now the only thing i would like to have here as well is some kind of padding so i will just create the padding on the v stack and that looks much better now let's run it and see if we actually get the um, different styles for the different states now here when we press the enable button it will, the background will turn blue and the font color will turn white. And the disabled button doesn't do anything. That's how we want it to be. And if we switch to um, the dark mode and the shortcut for this on the simulator is Command, Shift and A. And you will see that uh, it also adapts the colors for us when we turn into dark mode. All right, that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope this was useful. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new content arrives. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.